We're hitting the button early. Yeah, and I'm still fixing my hair. Live. Not that it helps. <laughs> from New York City. We are, aren't we? New York. Yeah. You're Lou. Yeah. I'm Slim. You are. Okay, I need to fix this, though. Fix your hair. This is, uh, we're broadcasting live from Comixology's HQ. Minute. You took my minute to It's fix 4 it. o'clock right now. Well. This is happening. We're going to talk about comic books. There. From Comixology HQ. And we'll see how it goes. A lot of books came out this week. A lot of books in the app. We have actually, yeah, like, I have a ton of books here to talk about. I have, like, look at these. Hey, Eric. Hey, Steven. I know. So many. So many. And look how pretty they are. You can hear them. They're like trading cards. What do you got? Okay. So, Descender, which is, like, one of the most beautiful books on the stands right now and this is no exception if we were still doing favorite cover of the week it would for sure be this one jeff lemire and dustin wen mm. who like was super cool at our booth at comic-con just saying did you get a picture yeah we wore our sunglasses because <clears throat> i like wearing my sunglasses so um i just yeah i'm just gonna show you like some of this beautiful it's about a robot cover. boy coming yeah. to grips so with his life. Well, because in the world, in the Descender world, like, robots are illegal because they're bad. Mm. I kind of, I, I was trying to explain this actually on our recommendation panel, and everybody yelled at me that I didn't specify that they're bad because they tried to wipe out the human, oh, like, yeah. humanity. <laughs> I felt like that was kind of a spoiler, but well, apparently that, that was issue. relevant information to share. I don't know. Anyway. Maybe. So there's little robot boy, Tim21. He is kind of, like, key to figuring out this robot problem <laughs> and um but dustin wen does all of these beautiful watercolors i don't wow. know if you can see but you can actually see the texture of the page and it uh, it just is so lovely um steven says we need to bring back the fave cover segment so that he can should. hear the jingle well how'd the jingle go i forget do you remember you're Steven? the one that sang all the jingles that was your jingle i think i don't know no, it was it was favorite cover of the week <laughs> <laughs> It sounds amazing. It sounds like something that I would write on the fly. Oh, yes. Anyway, well, this is my favorite cover of the week because look at those gorgeous <clears throat> colors. And mm. like, if you could see this in person, there's just like this sort of watercolory texture that um, that I love. You can even get it in person on your tablet. Right I, meow. You can't. I actually, I, I tweeted yesterday um, when we were getting the books up for a uh, new comic day today that... Like, the art in this book is so good, it makes my heart hurt. Wow. It might even That's look better on is. a tablet. Maybe, because you could really Say it right get now, it, it looks better on a tablet. Could really get into the colors and the textures and zoom in really close. Yeah. Saying it right now. It's a fact. Descender, number 25. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, the fourth issue of Thor vs. Hulk came out today. Oh, yeah. Speaking of... Comixology uh, original. And it's on Comixology Unlimited right, right now. I actually just have my phone. Look at my phone just sitting here right now out of nowhere. Oh, Andy. Look you at can your just boring phone cover. Open up the app. Look at this. I'm going to hit. This is how easy it is to get something on Comixology Unlimited. Borrow. That's it. Nice. I didn't have to pay for it. <laughs> um, what do I want to talk well, you about? you do work here. I do. Well, I also pay for Comixology Unlimited. Let's talk about Batman real quick. Real quick. Oh, I made them buy this cover because it was so pretty. Joelle Jones. This is our second favorite cover of the week. Not second as in, like, second, as in, like, we have two. Right. Yeah. Uh, Batman, I'm not sure if you're aware, there's probably some big stories in the USA Today newspaper. Do they still print that? I don't even know. But Catwoman <laughs> has said yes to Bruce, Batman. Um, Disapprove. So now Batman goes on a journey... Be careful, Batman. He's going with uh, Cat, because they call each other Bat and Cat, because that's what people do, I guess. Don't you call your wife Cat I don't, she calls you no, Bat? I don't, I don't approve of these little cutesy nicknames. I think they're silly. It's like Spider. So anywho, <laughs> they're in the desert. They're on this like, um, important oh my, expedition are. together, yeah. Bat and Cat. Oh, that's a beautiful page. Um, and you're not Who's really the artist on this book? Joelle. Joelle, Joelle Jones. Yeah, she does the whole issue, okay, too. good. And uh, Jordy on colors. Perfect. So Batman and Catwoman are journeying to oh this my. cave. And you're not really sure why. It's like Batman is, he needs to go here with Catwoman. Oh my. 
and someone's guarding the cave. And Is it Rackman? As soon as you get to the cave, they shoot to Alfred telling the Batman boys, you know, all the Robins, like, uh, FYI. Do you going to um, have a new mommy? He proposed and she said yes. And then Damon's like, oh, God. <laughs> I know, I know where they're. I know where they are. I know why they're going to that cave. Is that his baby Batman voice? Yeah, that's baby bats. <laughs> um, Damien's like crying in this issue because he's like scared about what's going to happen. Well, I mean, I mean, he's like eight and he fights crime at like three a.m. <laughs> so uh, terrible parenting. Very good issue of. Would you Batman. let your son fight crime? Absolutely not. No. You would just let the crime happen. <laughs> Excuse me. I remember in, like, uh, Scott Snyder's, um, one of the earlier trades where, like, Batman was missing because he was fighting the Talon. Yeah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were, like, shh, like, they were, like, putting the bat signal up, like, come on, Batman, show up. And then Damien, like, shows up on the rooftop in the pouring rain yeah. at, like, 2 a.m. And he's, like, shut it down. He's not coming. I'm like, <laughs> okay, eight-year-old kid, I'm going to go <laughs> shut this bat signal off. And this is totally normal. Whatever. I love the book. No, love it's it. great. Yeah. It's, Okay. So speaking of kids and inappropriateness, kid lobotomy. Oh is Brandon here? Brandon told us to pick this up. We're way ahead of you. Look at that beautiful cover. Frank something Quietly, is right? Going, something Frank is Quietly going cover. on on that cover. Oh, I man. don't know what, but something. This is um, from the Black Crown imprint that um, Shelley Bond is doing at IDW. The, oh. Yeah. So this is Peter Milligan and Tess Feller. And um, I don't know how to describe this book. It's sort of like if American Horror Story did The Shining. It anyway, um, it's about this kid and um, his father has like a hotel. Uh, he's like a hotel mogul. Love it. And so he puts the kid in charge of this hotel. And the kid also is like crazy. And there's this lobotomizing technique thing that they've just developed where if he like performs a lobotomy on someone who's crazy and eats the crazy part of their brain then it's somehow it's treatment for him there's also some like sort of incesty things going on with his sister but maybe it's just all in his head because he's crazy and that's actually like the thing that I really liked about kid lobotomy is the that incest. no <laughs> <laughs> banned. Hey, you're the one who transitioned you're from that banned. to immediately. That's actually the thing I liked about no, it. No, is that is the it's so crazy. Like it's so crazy, and I really think that um, it's kind of incomprehensible in a, in a really intentional way that orients you to the perspective of this protagonist who you're just not really sure when you can trust him because he's crazy, and so like you know he lives in this hotel with all of these like weird ghost fantastical creatures and and they're uh he's narrating the story and then like the story is happening and it just i think that as it, the issues come out it'll make itself a little more clear but for a first issue what it really does is it, it puts you into the head of this uh so, somewhat disturbed individual it's uh, peter milligan <laughs> Yeah. From, uh, we were talking about Enigma with uh, Kieran yep. Gillen. Mm -hmm, your favorite. You know what I was watched that you're always telling me to listen to, but I watched Amazon's Lore, uh -huh. the TV show based on a podcast? Yeah. You're, you tell me to, to listen to Lore, weren't you? I so might have. It sounds I like something you, I would yeah, say. I think you were. Yeah. But there's an episode on lobotomies, and they talked about a doctor that did lobotomies through the eye socket. Uh-huh, that's how you do them. Ugh. I mean, so it's a way to do them. I, I mean, guess it was popularized through the, when he did them, but then, like, 20% of people died that well, did that, and then, like, 13% got worse. I don't... I'm not a doctor, okay? Thanks for prefacing that. But <laughs> I don't think that, like, lobotomy... Lobotomies are good? Well, I, I assume it's not the, like, first treatment that you go for. I assume if you are going for a lobotomy, like, you've tried a bunch of things and they didn't work. And the, if you're going through your eye socket, you're at least not, like, putting another hole in your head. They were going to his office, know. like, as an outpatient. They just, like, would go in for an hour. He'd stick his little, mm -hmm. tweet, like, poker, yeah, the poker right thing. in the eye. Like an ice and pick. then he'd, like, move it. Yeah. And be like, okay, you're done. Yeah. It was uncomfortable. I think I wouldn't, I would not choose a lobotomy. If I can just focus in, uncomfortable. 
<laughs> but the book was really good. I really liked it. I'm definitely going to keep reading uh, just because I want to figure out, like, he sees bugs and he's like, talks to Kafka. And I mean, it's just like, I, I need to know what's going on. So I'm definitely going to keep reading. Talking I'm intrigued. Bugs. Um, let's, let's get into the fun of that the week. That was fun. Enough of the it's, incest. No, that's if not If we can fun. go one episode without talking about incest, <laughs> please. Deadpool versus old man Logan. I know what you're thinking right now. I'm thinking Deadpool's gonna win. You're like, oh, Deadpool, he's got like 30 issues out every month. He Who does. cares? Wrong. I mean, you're right, but wrong. Uh, old man Logan, it's very funny. It's actually written by Declan. Could you... Finish your sentence. Shall we? <laughs> Declan, <laughs> tell us. Could you perform a lobotomy with Wolverine's claws? You probably could. Just right in the eye socket, right in the holes. Yeah. That's where the thinnest bone is, as I learned. Yeah. Uh, Declan actually writes this one. Mike Henderson on art. It's uh, very well done. The first couple pages are really funny little four four panels horizontal and then it shifts can you even into... have a deadpool book that isn't funny i don't i mean no you can't yeah it's illegal declan actually drew my favorite deadpool story uh the Which good thing? the bad and the ugly mm. i think that was the title of it mm -hmm. but the gist is old man logan runs into deadpool kind of like out of nowhere and someone's on the run and some bad guys are after that person, and they need to team up. It's really funny. Actually, I really, I really liked it. Yeah. That's it. Oh, my turn. Yeah. Surprising no one, the Bitch Planet triple feature is one of my picks. Um, I was especially uh, happy with this uh, little... So, for those of you who don't know, first of all, the Bitch Planet triple feature is, like, three short stories that take place in the Bitch Planet world, but they're not part of the main Bitch Planet story. So um, in this one, the first short story is by Matt Fraction and Elsa Chartier, who was also oh, on that cool. panel with me. Uh, and it's about this girl who brings her fiancé home for Christmas, and her grandma, like, spouts out some feminist stuff and gets thrown into the, like... Bitch Planet for Old Ladies. <laughs> um, it's amazing, and it's kind of raunchy, and I love it. But I saw some guy doing push-ups. Was that a... Who was that? That's Oh, that's someone else. It's another story. That's another story. Yeah. yeah. The corner of my eye. Yes. I saw some sweaty push-ups. There's also a really... Um, the, there's, there's a story where it sort of, like, not so subtly takes down cultural appropriation and, like, is a really good example of why it's crappy mm. and you shouldn't do it. So, you know, it has it, it has its serious themes, just like the regular Bitch Planet series. I like how there's cosplay on the back cover. Oh, yeah, check her yeah, out. That's not an ad. Look at her. Spending the time there. She looks amazing. Pretty Don't mess sweet. with her. Yeah. <clears throat> Brandon, let us know if you like Kid Lobotomy. Let me know if uh, if you found it as let exciting as I did. Let us know what you thought of Tia uh, Lou's favorite part, which I won't mention again. Maestros. Oh, this book looks very pretty. It is very pretty. Steve Scrose, um, maybe, I grew up, he did like a four-issue run on Wolverine, and it blew my mind. Look at, yeah. But he also, he was oh like the my. storyboard artist, or concept artist, I think storyboard artist for The Matrix. Um, he did that book with Brian K. Vaughn last year, the Canadian book. Um... You know what this reminds me of? Tell me. It reminds me of, um, in Buddhist art, they have these, like, uh, guardian guys, because, like, obviously if you're a Buddha or, um, or, like, a Bodhisattva, you can't fight people, so they have these, like, guardian deities to, like, fight the demons for them. That's what that reminds That's me of. That's the first thing I thought of, too. Yeah. I was like, I, f I wonder if Lou is going to get that as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you are not pleased with me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Just trying to like page. tell this, you things. This guy's getting his face kicked in. Well, there's also Look at that. that. There's a lot of guts also. On this the guy other has side. someone's skin as a as a loincloth. Well, face I mean, skin. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> essentially, Maestros is um, there's this world of wizards and like kind of um, where this entire world is about magic, and the king gets murdered. 
and their entire line is murdered, and the only people that were spared were kind of of the royal line were the wife and son because they divorced, so they weren't mm. at the party. Mm-hmm. And the son is on Earth, so the wife goes to track him down on Earth, and he, he's got some, like, magic in him, and, but he's just using it for, like, parlor tricks and to make money. Mm-hmm. And he's got to go back home. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah, I shouldn't show that <laughs> oh. on screen. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, nine, nine and a half. Okay, no. Um, you'll get that when you read it. This has been a raunchy it's episode. It's a very violent, uh, beautifully drawn book. Uh, so now this this kid who's kind of like been banished from this this fun, beautiful world of wizardry. He's a grown-up now. He's a grown-up. He has to go decide to go back because I think he might be the new king. Um, there's a real... I don't want to spoil it, but the gist of how this wizarding world and Earth are connected is, is something I'd never heard of before in other books. It's really smart. They show him as a young boy and kind of like why he... <laughs> as he started out not being invited into this wizarding world, even though he's the son of the king, um, really surprised me. I thought it was kind of just going to be this beautiful book by Steve Scrooge, but it actually had a really cool backstory. I really liked it. So that's, uh, who is that? Is it Image? Yeah, yeah it's Image. Image. Yeah, so, so as to not make this the Image show, I'm just going to really quickly go through these next three books I have, which happen to all also be Image. Speaking of magic, curse words is out and uh there's a lot of fighting in this book and and uh someone is betrayed by someone and it kind of actually made me sad even though that someone like isn't someone that you would typically feel sorry for i don't know like this was a great is it satan it was there's no satan uh. also in case you have lost track margaret is a platypus now hashtag team margaret course yeah this is um ryan brown and charles soul whoa <laughs> i just left <laughs> oh my out of God. my head take um, it easy there's also generation gone number four is out the ending <laughs> will blow your mind i won't spoil it for you um also shirtless bear fighter is happening um there's a lot of fighting and bears Dong. also I, f- I feel like this back uh, image sh- <laughs> is like slim. Just like I need that as a, I need that as a tattoo. They I make think. enamel pins, so you should Ooh. definitely get one. My favorite part is that, uh, as to not make it an image show, here's three image books. <laughs> well, <laughs> moving on. Uh, I actually read. Um, I didn't read this particular issue. What were you about to say? Well, Lazarus. Uh, they're doing like a side story, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they're doing the side story right now. Yeah. Um, oh, and it got optioned. Yeah, I think you you said it was like um, it was actually Amazon that optioned it. Was it you? Was it? Yeah, I read it on uh, Amazon. Right. Um, They're busy boys, basically. Busy boys. Greg, hashtag. Craig Greca and Michael Lark uh, have a lot going on. Wonder Woman oh. and Conan. Nice. The budding friendship you didn't know existed. Nice. From DC Comics. Uh, I actually read the first issue. I haven't read the second one yet today. Um, it's hard to explain. Uh, Conan uh, s- saves someone from getting pretty much murdered for money. Turns out the guy doesn't really have the money, so he goes with him. He says, "He like, oh, I have this thing that I can't lose." And I'm like, I'm good at bets, so let's go to this arena. And there's this Amazonian woman mm-hmm. uh, fighting to for her life in this arena. And you're like, what the heck's Wonder Woman doing in uh, Conan world? I don't have an answer for you, but Conan and Wonder Woman are in some trouble. And they need to work together to get out. I, th- I saw the preview for cover three, and it looks like they were going to smooch. Oh. Hello. They're fighting sharks. <laughs> um, uh, is Gail Simone, I think. Aaron Lepresti. You know, why not throw Wonder Woman and Conan together and I mean, see what happens? I feel like if there's one writer who knows both of those uh, genres, the Conan genre since she did Red mm-hmm. Sonia, which I associate Red Sonia and Conan, and obviously Wonder Woman, like, she's the one to do it. Did you ever watch the animated series? Hi! Uh, the... Conan? Conan, The no. Adventurer? No, I just watched the Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. The one with Grace Jones? Dark Horse Comics. Scott, it... Here, 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 <laughs> Scott. There you go. That's for you. <laughs> Scott gets the no prize for watching on the can. Uh, Dark Horse Comics, Sherlock Frankenstein, and the Legion of Evil. Nice. Coming from the world of Black Hammer, 
my pick for 2017 and 2018, whatever year. And the rest of your that. life. Best book on the stands. What I didn't realize, I kind of, I saw some news happening on the internets, um, but Black Hammer, I think, is like going on hiatus with issue 13, and it's, it might restart with a new oh. number one. Mm. Um, something big happens on issue 13. So this series, yeah, it's actually pretty new reader friendly. Yeah. They explain how um, the lead uh, character, Lucy Weber, is on the hunt to find out what happened to her superhero father a couple years ago. So she starts digging into, he, she stumbles upon his secret headquarters and like finds a list of like all the bad guys that it's he fought. Me. Cthulhu. <laughs> I need to change my Twitter handle to that. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. Yeah. Um, and Dave Rubin, who is one of my favorite artists, does is going to be doing this mini series, and uh, it's just beautiful. That guy is so under the radar. I feel like he should be like one of the most popular artists. I agree. In town. I agree. I would love to see him do more, just so that there is more of his art in the world because Absolutely. it's great. I love Ether. Uh, so the first issue is her trying to get to see, you know, who's involved with my father miss, uh, going missing, and as you have maybe read in Black Hammer, you know a little bit more about that backstory, but you can certainly jump in with this issue and then and then eventually be like, well, you know, maybe I'm going to try out that, that Black Hammer stuff. And, and you better, or you're banned. Mm. I will ban you. You're banned. Ban, this is the ban hammer. So this it, is the ban hammer. hammer. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Last one? Last one. Okay. All right, here, you hold the band I'll hammer. Hold the, Can you be trusted? I will hold... Are you worthy? I'm certainly worthy of a band hammer. My word. <laughs> I don't believe him. <laughs> I don't believe him. Dub ill Anything will. good from Image this week? You missed it. We went through all the Image. <laughs> it's been a quiet week for Look, Image. Will. So much Image. All the Image. He got you. Yeah. He trolled you. So, much. so wait, what's this last book? For okay, Fana? so this last book is actually Fanographics. Okay, um, now number one, it's an anthology. Uh, it's huge. Look at it's massive. Sorry, this way, this way. Yeah, it's uh, it's over a uh, hundred pages um, with just little different. Uh, I wouldn't even call them shorts because they're about as long, some of them, as like a regular single issue. So uh, for ten bucks. Uh, in print. In print, yeah. What is it on? Seven the bucks, six ninety nine in digital. Ooh, um, you just get sort of a little bit of everything. There's some really great creators in here: Eleanor Davis, Dash Shaw, Noah Van Scriver, uh, Malachi Ward, Matt Sheehan, just to name a few. So, um, you know, check it out. A little mm -hmm. bit of everything. The Malachi Ward Matt Sheehan one was my favorite because it's about space. Oh, we forgot to uh, mention Thor seven hundred. Where is it? I thought I gave that to you. No, Maybe it's sitting on my I desk. I left it with you. Anyway, Thor 700 is it's the thing out. that happened. It's real. There's like a who's who of artists on Thor 700. Yeah. There's a lot going on. I'm not up to date on Thor, so nobody asked me anything. I just know that there's a lot of sexy Thors. So many. There's Frog, there's frog of Thunder is in there. Yeah. Wow. Walt Simonson did it a couple pages. Wow. Uh, so that's it. Yeah. What a show. Did you feel the magic? I feel like... Uh, you look like you're ready for a nap. I am. That was exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so don't forget to buy everything we talked about today. And more. If you only buy one book this week, Black Hammer, obviously. That's the oh best out of the whole bunch. If you don't buy Black Hammer right now, I will shut this feed off so fast. Wow. I'm just kidding. We have to shut it off anyway because we have work oh. to do. One more thing that was cool. I just found out that Harrow County is in Comicsology Unlimited now. Speaking of beautiful art. My word. So. Speaking of. Um, so maybe just go get on Comicsology Unlimited and then you can read all of Harrow County and Thor vs. Hulk. My gosh, what a sell. Right? Uh, I forgot to tell you that I saw it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Made me uncomfortable. Extremely uncomfortable. Because you were attracted to Pennywise? Not because of my lusting for Pennywise. <laughs> Um, I don't know if, if anyone has, has not has or has not seen Thor and doesn't want any spoilers, you can shut mm -hmm. it off now. It? Uh, yeah, it by uh, I know going in, you know, I've seen the old movie. Right, it's about kids getting mm -hmm. you know everything bad happened to these kids. Yeah. However, the first the little was a Georgie, the little brother, mm -hmm. when he gets like taken by it, like why did they need to show on screen it taking a big bite out of that kid's arm? 
He's like six. <laughs> well, don't we have any kind of standards for like violence against kids on, no, on screen? We really don't. There should be. I, I feel like that's the limit. Getting an arm chewed off. No. But you know what? You can live without your arm. Well, I don't need to see a six-year-old getting brutally violented on screen. <laughs> I don't need that. I got a kid, you know? Well, don't chew his arm off. I'm not going to chew his arm off, but there needs to be a limit. And I'm going to take it all the way to the MPAA. Oh, well, they're listening. They, they watch better, the yeah. show. They, I know they're listening. Yeah. Uh, Mr. MPAA. Uh, Brandon, I thought it was great. I still love Tim Curry, but he did a good job on the reboot. Definitely. Listen. I said my piece. MPAA, the ball's in your court. <laughs> I guess we'll see everybody next week. I think Amato agrees with you. Amato, yeah. Amato knows. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks Bye. for watching.